and welcome to LifeGate Church, everybody. Come on, let's stand today. For those of you online, great to have you. Come on, let's lift our hearts and our voices and worship this morning. Here we go.
we applaud the Lord in this place, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Father. The Bible says we're two or three gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. He's here in our midst. The Spirit of God is ready and able to be poured out on us. And so I want to invite every person here in this room, those joining us online, to one more time in, as we close this time of worship in your own way, in your own heart, to begin to lift your voice, begin to lift your prayer, an invitation, asking God, pour your spirit out on me. As we do that individually, collectively together, the spirit of God pours himself out. So come on, from the front to the back, can we begin to invite the spirit of God to greater infiltrate our hearts, infiltrate our lives. Come on, begin to lift up a prayer, lift up a prayer, lift up worship. Jesus, we need you in our midst, Lord. We want you to pour your spirit out on us. We're not satisfied with where we are. We're not satisfied with who we are. We need more of you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. You so freely pour out on your people. And Father, today, as your people, we turn our attention this Memorial Day weekend to those joining us here in our midst or online that are remembering and grieving the loss of a loved one who's given their life in the service of our country. And Father, as they remember that life this weekend, Lord, I pray that your spirit would be truly close. And Lord, would they know they're not alone as we remember and as we honor that ultimate sacrifice. God, we thank you for the power of your presence that changes everything. We love you. We worship you. And everybody said together, amen. Amen. Come on, can we applaud the Lord one more time? So good. So good to worship with you all. What a powerful, powerful time. Would you do this? Say hello to somebody around you as you're finding your seats. That would be super great. Great to be together on this Memorial Day weekend. Man, it's good to be together. Listen, if we haven't had the pleasure to meet, my name is Jake Adams. I with Pastor Brian. We are your campus pastors here at West Dodge, and it is a privilege to be together on this Memorial Day weekend. I want to say hello to everybody joining us online. Can we say hi here from West Dodge to everybody joining us from wherever they're joining us? Super great to see you all. Also, if you're joining with us and you're really new or newer here to LifeGate, we're so excited you're here. We want to invite you to take next steps because we believe that you belong here at LifeGate. I truly believe that. There's a place for you, a people for you to be a part of, and we want to connect further with you and help you connect further with us. We also have a gift for you that's super great that you're going to want to take advantage of. You can help us get that gift in your hands by you taking the card that's at your seat in the cup holder, filling that out, and immediately following the service, take it to our Connect Zone where we'll be able to hook you up with that free gift, answer any questions you have. And that would be great. If you're joining us online, you can go to our website, chat in the, in the chat box, I'm new. We'll be able to reach out accordingly and care for you as well. That'd be super great. Well, you all are so amazing in your faithfulness to return the Lord's side. We have some exciting news on how we're equipping you to better be able to do that. So check this video out. Hey everybody, Pastor Les here with an announcement about a new giving platform. But before I make it, let me say this. I can't tell you enough how proud I am of every single one of you in your faithfulness to return the Lord's tithe to the storehouse. You are an incredible people, and I just, I love leading you. I love celebrating you, so I wanted to know that. Here's the next thing. Does it bug you when there's an update that pops up on your computer or on your phone? It says, this is the newest update, and I'm like, I don't want a new update. It's so frustrating. It, it tends to, like, change everything, and so when I come to you with a new giving platform, you may be tempted, as I was, to say, ah, why do we need a new giving platform at all? And so I want you to know that this platform will not only be secure, it will be simpler than the old one, and it will be very, very fast. And one of our goals is to simplify things 
so that everyone can benefit and it's not difficult at all. All the details will be given to you online, all those things, but can I encourage you to take the time and as Chris and I did, try to automate the Lord's tithe so it's absolutely consistent. It'll take the burden off of you and there'll be a sense of, Lord, I'm putting you first above everything else. So the push pay platform that we're beginning, my hope and my encouragement to you as your pastor, let's all get on board. Let's make the transition. It'll take a little time, but in the long run, it will be secure and simple and fast. I celebrate all of you. God bless you as you make this transition. Right on. We're very excited about this opportunity to be able to serve you better as you're so faithful to return the Lord's tithe. One real quick detail is if you've already automated your giving on the old platform, it's essential to close that and open it on the new platform. Again, you're going to feel that it's so much simpler, safer, and easier for you for you to use and be a gift to you as you're a gift to this house and all that God is doing in it. Are you excited to hear the Word of God today? That's it. We're excited. We have a special word from a special man, so let's receive this word together with everything we've got. Here we go. Come on. Hey, everybody. I know in this series, Laws That Liberate, it can be challenging as we progress, especially after last weekend. How in the world am I expected to actually keep these laws? Pastor Taylor did such a great job of showing us that in the face of our inability is the ability of Jesus. But how does that work? We're taking a little pause in the series so that we can answer that question. And we have a guest speaker, John Weasel, who is the lead pastor along with Angel Weasel, his wife, at Dream City Omaha, an amazing church and an amazing people. He has been married for 15 years. He has four children. Those are great credentials. But 12 years ago, he was a part of the startup of Dream City with 10 people in a garage. And since then, he's been the media director, he's been the youth pastor, he's been the associate pastor, the executive pastor, and the last three years, he's been the lead pastor, leading people into the fulfillment of John chapter 10, verse 10, that Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. I really want to encourage you as you're listening to see and hear what God wants to do in us to empower us to be those who are able to fulfill the law that liberates. Would you join with me in welcoming to the platform, Pastor John Weasel. Amen. What's up, LifeGate? How are you guys doing this morning? One of you is doing good. Hopefully at Papillion, you're doing better than West Dodges or Fremont or Midtown or, or, or Surrey. Wherever you find yourself, those of you watching online, we want to jo- uh, say welcome to you as well. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. Are you ready for the word today? Good. Now I need you to be engaged. I need you to talk back to me. It's okay to talk in church. Okay, maybe you didn't grow up in a church where it was okay to talk. Maybe maybe your mom hit your hand when you talked in church. Listen, I want you to talk back to me this morning. Is that all right? Good, good. Before we get into the word, the Bible says to, to give honor where honor is due. And uh, in this weekend, we, we remember those who have paid the ultimate price. Those who have, have sacrificed so much for the freedoms that we enjoy today. And so we, we honor those that have, have fallen in defense of this country and our freedom. And we also want to pause and, and honor our pastors, your pastors, Pastor Les and Chris. And really from the top down, every, everyone here deserves honor and is worthy of honor. Pastor, Pastor Les has been not just a blessing to me in my ministry, but he's been a blessing to me in my marriage and in my life. And I, listen, I've been around a lot of pastors. I've met a lot of pastors. You guys have one of the best pastors. He is the most caring, one of the most genuine. He is one of the most ruggedly handsome. What else did he want me to say? There's something else. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. He didn't pay me to say any of this, but I want you to know that, that you are spoiled here with the pastors that you have. Can we put our hands together and honor your pastors today? Amen. Man, we're, we're pausing, like Pastor Les said, this law is liberate, because if you're like me, you've gotten overwhelmed at this point, right? Like you start looking into God's word and it's like, how can I do that? I can't do that. 
I love last week that Pastor Taylor said that, that God's word, the, the commandments are like a mirror. And I've always thought of God's word that way because, because a mirror shows and it reflects what's there. And, and when we read God's word, it's, it's useful for showing us the things we're doing well and for showing us the things that maybe we're not doing so well. I remember one time I was, I was getting ready for, for work in the morning. The kids were getting ready for school. And, and my youngest son, Carter, he's 10 years old. He was standing in the bathroom. He was in the mirror and he was flossing. And I don't mean that he was flossing his teeth. I mean that he was... He was flossing. Some of you, some of you don't know what that is. It's a, it's a Fortnite dance. Ask somebody with kids, they'll tell you what it is. But, but he was flossing and he was doing the orange justice and he was doing all of these Fortnite dances in the mirror, getting ready for school in the morning. And, and I came around the corner and I saw him and he's got this big smile on his face and he's, he's feeling really proud of himself. He's dancing in the mirror. And you know, after a couple of minutes, the smile turns into a frown. And I said, son, what's the matter? What's wrong? And he says, well, dad, when, when I'm doing the dances in, in my mind, I'm doing so good. But when I look in the mirror, I realize that I'm really not dancing that good. I said, well, son, you have your mother to thank for that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He said, in my head, I think I'm doing so good. But then when I look in the mirror, I realize I'm not doing that good. And that's how I feel when I look at the mirror of God's word. When I, when I hold up the mirror of God's word and compare it to my life and he begins to show me all the ways where I thought I was killing it, right? Because like me, we can go about our day and think we're doing so good. Like God, you must be so proud of me today. I brought you your tithe and I even added a little offering on top of it. Aren't you so proud? Look how awesome I'm doing. God, that person cut me off in traffic and I didn't even tell them that they were number one. God, you, you must be so you must be so proud of me. You know what I'm talking about? Number one, not number one, but yeah. God, I'm killing it this week as a parent. God, I'm, I'm killing it as a husband, as a wife, whatever the case may be. And then we look into the mirror of God's word and it's like, maybe I wasn't doing as good as I thought I was. Maybe there's still some room for improvement. And so today I want us to, to look about that because if you're like me, you realize that we need help. How many of you guys need some help today? Come on, Pastor Les has told me about you. I know you guys need help. <laughs> Call Dr. Deb, it's fine. We all, we all need help. And, and thankfully, as we look at God's word, God didn't, God didn't send us out here to do it on our own. He didn't give us a, a pat on the backside and say, go get him, tiger. Only for us to, to, to try and fail time and time again by ourselves, but he has given us someone to help us. John chapter 14, if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, if you're taking notes today, the title of this, this message, this talk is, I need help. John chapter 14, Jesus is, is getting ready to be arrested. He's preparing his disciples for what is to come and he's, he's speaking to them. And here's what he says in verse number 16. He says, I will ask the father and he will give you another helper, depending on your translation that might read encourager, comforter, advocate, I will give you another helper so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you and he will be in you. Skip down to verse 26. Jesus says that the helper, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. This morning, I want us to look at the Holy Spirit as our helper. Lord, we pray that over the next few moments that your word would come alive to us, that it would not just be words on a page or words on a screen, but I thank you that this is the living, the active, the breathing word of the Lord, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to cut between soul and spirit, bone, bone and marrow. And Lord, I pray that whatever surgery needs to be done spiritually today, that you would do. God, I thank you that your word is transformational. It was never meant to be informational only, but transformational, but that comes through the application of your word. So help us to be doers and not just hearers. Speak to every heart, speak to every life. May we, may we leave different than when we came in this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. This morning, I want us to talk about the Holy Spirit. Now I grew up in, in old school AG. So to us, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Ghost. 
There's a Holy Ghost. And every time I heard about the Holy Ghost, again, as a kid growing up in the 90s, the theme song for Unsolved Mysteries popped into my head and I saw the creepy guy with the creepy voice and it was the Holy Ghost. Like that's how I, that's how I pictured it. That's how it was communicated to me. That's, that was my understanding of the Holy Spirit. And I think so many of us have a misunderstanding of who he is and what he wants to do in his role in our lives. And so I want us to look at that today. This summer I was... I was thinking, what are we going to do for vacation? Last summer, we took our, our kids to Orlando. Anybody ever been to Disney? Happiest place on earth. <laughs> if you want to pay $30 for a cheeseburger, take your kids to Disney. We went to Florida and, and we went to Disney. You know, we're driving around. Angel want to go to the beach. So we went to the beach and, and we were driving back to Orlando. We had rented this car. I have four kids. They're 14, 13 10 and eight, I'll remember their names one of these days, but four kids in the back of a car driving across the state of Florida. If you ever traveled with four kids, you understand how real that that struggle is, right? Like God's word says that every good and perfect gift comes from the father. We recognize that kids are a gift from the Lord, but I wanted to exchange a couple of those gifts. (laughs) We're driving across Florida and they're in the back seat. He's touching me. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. My finger is not touching you. Get your finger out of my face. Your breast stinks. Your face stinks. And like, it's nonstop back and forth. And so, so guys, I did what, what most of us would do. I put my headphones in. And I love, I love Apple. I'm an Apple guy. And I love the AirPods, specifically the AirPods Pro, because they have this feature on them called noise cancellation. Which means that everything going on out here just gets canceled left those bad boys in as I was driving. Couldn't hear anything. It was wonderful. It was just me, the road, and my, my podcast. And I'm driving down the road and I'm blissfully unaware of whatever's happening in the car. Angel's reading a book, which how you can read a book in that environment, I don't know. But moms, you have the superpower of like, you just have this natural noise cancellation mode that dads, we didn't get. So like moms, that's one of the, the mom's superpowers that you have. And so, uh, so I'm driving unaware of what's happening in the car. And it was great because I couldn't hear my kids fighting. It was bad because I couldn't hear the ding when we got low on gas. <laughs> so I'm between Tampa and Orlando, middle of the interstate, just enjoying my podcast. Have no idea what's happening. Go to pass a car and I got nothing. There is no response from the vehicle that I'm driving. So I look down and I look at the gas gauge and I see that it's not just close to E or guys where we like to keep it just below E, but the gas gauge was like almost wrapped around to where it was almost full again. (laughs) Like that's how empty we were. So I ripped out my AirPods and I looked at Angel. I said, we're out of gas. And she's like, how did you let this happen? What are we going to do? In my mind, me and my three boys are like having to push this van down the interstate all the way to Orlando. And so we're just coasting at this point. I have no power. I have, I have nothing. Nothing is responding. We're just coasting down the interstate. Cars are flying past us. I'm signaling and merging and signaling and merging. And there's an exit about a quarter of a mile down the road. And I begin to intercede, God, if you could just get us to that exit. Like if we could just get there, I'm I'm just praying a supernatural rush of wind to enable us to get to this exit. And so we we get onto the off ramp. And and as I look ahead, there's there's no cars in front of me, but there is a light down there. And as I see the light, it's red. And I begin to repent of all the things that I've done in the last 12 hours. God, I'm sorry that I wanted to send two of these kids back to the manufacturer. God, I apologize. I, I repent of that. That's something dark and evil in me. Would you just remove that even right now? And God, if you could just somehow turn that light green and help us get to a gas station, I, would, I, will, I will be a missionary wherever you, have you ever prayed those prayers? <laughs> right, like if you just get me out of this mess, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And so I begin to pray this. And, and about this time, the kids start realizing what's going on. And Jules crying because in her mind, we're, we're stranded in the middle of nowhere. And, and the boys are like, we got this, dad, we got this. And I'm like, shut up, boys. Let me think, I gotta focus. 
So we're coasting to the light. Light turns green, like, thank you, Jesus. And so we coast through the light around the corner. The gas station's right there. But the, the ramp up to the gas station, like, we don't have that much momentum. We, we're, we're not carrying much speed at this point. So we hit the ramp, we come up into the gas station, and it takes the last little bit of momentum, and we coast, and we pull up, and I, I kid you not, we stop right next to the pump. We stop next to the pump and the three young men that I'm discipling and training to be good men themselves in the back seat, I turn around and I said, boys, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's what's up. Come on, guys. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm feeling good about myself. Like, that's right. Nobody has to push today. Open the door and I step out. And as I go to pump the gas, there was tape on the pump. It said out of order. Go and pop that in neutral because I'm going to have to push us to the next pump. And, and I'm not, I don't know why, I don't know how, but I'm convinced that one day I'm going to get to heaven and God's going to be like, that was me. I was in heaven and I was watching this and I told Gabriel, we can't just let him get away with this. Go do something. <laughs> We're in it. We're in it. Yes, coasted in. Barely made it by the skin of our teeth. Now, here's my question. How many of us are living lives like that? Not physically, but spiritually. How many of us are just trying to make it to next Sunday and come to church and say, Pastor, fill me up because I'm dry and I'm empty. Pastor, I've been coasting for too long and, and I might get stranded. I might get stuck on the side of the road. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but if I could just get another quick refill. We operate that way spiritually. And then we find ourselves in a, in a time where we've experienced in the last 15 months, COVID-19 and, and the most divisive political cycle we've ever seen. Social unrest, kids can't go to school, no one can go to work, people are in the home stuck together literally every hour of the day and we're in this situation in this season, empty and dry spiritually and we wonder why marriages are crumbling and substance abuse is on the rise and everything is falling apart. It's because in the church even, we've been going on this coasting week to week, just get me to the next fill up, the next gas station, the next experience and that's not how we were meant to live. That's not how we were meant to operate. Church isn't your spiritual gas station where if you can just make it to next week, you'll be fine. Because what happens is we go to work on Monday, we go to school, we go to Walmart. I mean, you know, you need the Holy Spirit for Walmart. People are like, do I need the Holy Spirit to get to heaven? No, but you sure need him to go to Walmart. <laughs> You need them to get on social media. You need the Holy Spirit everywhere you go. You need the Holy Spirit in the, the school pickup line. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit produces fruit in our lives. One of those fruit is patience. Patience for when that mom cuts you off in the school pickup. You know what I'm talking about. You want to honk your horn. You want to roll your window down. You want to do all of the things until they cut you off and you see that LifeGate decal in their back window. Like, I can't believe, oh, she's probably in my small group. <laughs> right? Like Dream City, people at my church have been asking me for like 10 years, can we get those decals so that I can put it next to my little stick figure family on the back of my car? I'm like, no, because I've seen you drive. <laughs> But we treat God like this spiritual gas station where if I can just make it to the next visit and the next experience and then fill up, I'll be good. But that's not how we were meant to live. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus in Ephesians 5 and he says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that word be filled is not just a regular word in a regular tense, but it's this word in the present continuous tense. A better translation of that verse would be instead be continuously every day being filled ongoingly with the Holy Spirit. It's this daily relationship that we have with him where every day and every moment, no matter where you find yourself in that moment, you could just say, Holy Spirit, would you just, would you just do you and keep me from doing me? Would you just fill me with with your power so that I don't have to do this on my own? God, would you, would you come in and get rid of all of me until all that remains is all of you? Because I can't do this. I'm looking at those, those laws that liberate, I, I can't live this way. God knew you couldn't live that way. That's why Jesus said, it's better for you that I leave. It's best for you that I go. Why? Because while I'm here, God's spirit is contained in me. 
But when I go, the Father will send the Holy Spirit. Why? So that his spirit is in all of you. It's the multiplication of the power in the spirit of God in our world. Be filled, be being filled with the power of the spirit. I think one day we're gonna get to heaven. Listen, when I get to heaven, I'm gonna have all kinds of questions. Right? Mostly for, mostly for people I read about in scripture. Moses, what was it like, dude? Moses, what was it like standing at the Red Sea and just holding your stick up? Just all of a sudden, whoosh. Joshua, what was it like? Just shouting at the walls and the walls coming down. Like, what was it? Daniel, what was it like in the lion's den? Jonah, how bad did it smell in the fish? And I go, all these questions that I have for all these people when I get to heaven. David, what was it like facing Goliath? And I think here's what's going to happen. I think I'm going to go running up to these people and they're going to be like, yeah, we'll get to that. Like, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the Red Sea. We'll get to, to, to Jericho. We'll get to all of that. But first you tell me what it was like. You want to know about the Red Sea? Yeah, that was great. But what was it like having God's spirit in you each and every day? You want to know what Jericho was like? What was it like having continuous access to the very throne room of God? You want to know what the lion's den was like? What was it like not, and not needing a priest to go into God's presence for you or to speak to God for you, but, but having intimate relationship with the creator of the universe? What was that like being empowered with the very spirit of God, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead was living in you every day? What was that like? Because I didn't know that. Like it changes our perspective in the way that we think about this. You have access to that. We have access to that, but we leave so much on the table because we don't understand it. Two things about the Holy Spirit. Number one, I want to talk to you about the person of the Holy Spirit and then the power of the Holy Spirit. And listen, the Holy Spirit is a person, not an experience. He's a person. He's a, he's a he, not an it. You need to understand that. Now, don't get me wrong. He leads us into experiences and there are things that we experience with and through the Holy Spirit, but he very much as a person in scripture teaches us that he is a person. John 14 says he teaches, he guides, he comforts, he intercedes. Ephesians 4, we see that he has emotions. 1 Corinthians 2, he has thoughts. 1 Corinthians 12, he has a will. Acts chapter 5, he can be lied to. 1 Corinthians, he gives gifts. Galatians 5, he produces fruit. These don't sound like something that an experience does, but instead these sound like a person to me. And then the scripture teaches us such. The purpose of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer is not to simply check something off of a spiritual checklist. It's not to get an experience. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is not so you can show up to, to church and when the worship team hits that one note, then you get the goosebumps and that's when you know the Holy Spirit was real. That's when I knew at, at the altar that day when, when I was prayed for, that's when I, when I felt it. I felt the Holy Spirit and, and that's when I knew, listen, that's, that's an experience, yes. But that is not the end all be all of the Holy Spirit. When I, when, I, when I showed up at church and Pastor Les preached the message and he said all the things that I've been saying to my husband all week, that's when I knew. You, you laugh because it's real. But the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to equip you, to enable you, to empower you, to be able to live the life that you are called to live. I can't do this thing on my own, but thankfully God has sent me a helper and that is the Holy Spirit. How do I live the liberated life? John 10, 10, how do I live the abundant life? How do I have this fulfilled life where, where, where everything that, that I need is provided for me? Now listen, the abundant life, the liberated life, the free life that God has purchased for you, is a life where he provides for every one of your needs, but not caves to every one of your wants. You need to understand that because I think some of us, we come to church and it's like, God, I want this and I want that. We confuse it. And so we say, I need this and I need that. It's like, you don't really need that. And when he doesn't give it to us, it's like, I thought you wanted me to be happy. God doesn't care about your happiness. Sorry to burst your little bubble this morning. God doesn't care about your happiness. He cares about your holiness. Doesn't matter what wants you have, but what needs. God will meet every one of your needs according to his riches and glory, but he's not gonna cave into all of your desires like a little kid. God, why can't I have? Because it's not good for you right now. My son is turning 15 in July. He gets his permit. 
Dad, does that mean that I get your truck? No, you don't get my truck. Why? Because it's not good for you right now. One day, maybe, not right now. Dad, can I drive home from school? No, you can't drive home. Why? I get my permit in a couple of months because it's not good for you right now. I know you want to, you don't need to. God's the same way. We go to God's like, God, I want this relationship. (laughs) That's not good for you right now. God, I want this promotion at work. It's not good for you right now. God, I want, I want, I want, I will give you what you need Instead, that is the abundant, liberated life that he has called for us to live. How do we live that? By, by recognizing that everything we, we need, we already have. Second Peter chapter one, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. The liberated life that, that we've been learning about and hearing about and, and talking about, how do, how do we live that? How do we access that? By recognizing that everything we need, he's given to us already. Luke chapter 24, now we're gonna look at the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, Jesus is getting ready to ascend to the Father. He says, now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised, but stay here in the city till the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Jesus was, was, was on the cross. He was buried in the tomb. He rose from the dead for 40 days. He walked with his disciples. Now he's given them the command and the charge and the mandate of going into all of the world and preaching the gospel, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all of the commands that he's given them. And he's told them, but before you do that, you need to stay here and wait. You need to wait in the city. Don't, don't try and do anything until you've been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God had given the command that he knew they couldn't do in their own strength, but they needed his power to accomplish. Same way for you and I. We've been given commands. What commands have I been given? To honor the Lord your God. To make for unto yourself no no idols, to not take his name in vain, to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, to honor your father and mother, to not murder, steal, cheat, lie, covet, not to, to do any of those things. And Jesus, he, he, he summarizes it in this way. He says the entire law, the entire prophets, everything rests on these two things, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. That's a command that you and I have been given that we cannot do unless we have the power of the Holy Spirit active and working in our lives on a daily basis. I can't love God the way that I need to. I can't, I can't I, I, if it was left to me, there would be idols all over the place in my heart. I'd be putting idols on the throne of my life every day. The only way that I can love the Father the way that I need to is if the Holy Spirit is removing all of me. The only way that I can love my wife as Christ loved the church The only way, wives, for us to to submit to our husbands as as we, the church, submit to Christ, the only only way for me to love you is if the power of the Holy Spirit is working in me. There are commands that I can't do, you can't do, we can't do, unless the power of the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. Jesus says, listen, there's something important that you need to do, but first you need to wait. You need to hurry up and wait. Have you ever had to hurry up and wait? Anybody, Anybody ever have to hurry up and wait? All the men in the room? When are you going to be ready? Five minutes. You said five minutes, 10 minutes ago, right? Hurry up and wait. That's what Jesus told the disciples. You need to hurry up and wait. There's something that we need to do. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we have the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter one, Jesus says, you will receive power. Somebody say power. Power. Say it like you mean it. Say power. power. Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. That word power in the original language, the Greek language is the word dunamis. It's where we get our English word dynamite from. Some of you are nodding your heads because you've probably heard this taught before that when we, when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, we get the dunamis dynamite power of the Spirit. And, and a lot of times we, we think about this power as this explosive supernatural power. And yes, there are supernatural gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to whom he chooses. There are gifts of tongues and interpretation and prophecy and faith and words of wisdom and words of knowledge and discerning of spirits and, and all these different gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. And, and we think about this dunamis dynamite doing power. But I think the most supernatural gift and ability that the Holy Spirit gives is the ability to love, is the power to love. Because in today's world, how you know loving our neighbors is supernatural? Jesus was asked, who is my neighbor? (laughs) Who must I love? Who must I show kindness to? Jesus says, the person that didn't vote like you. It's essentially what he said. 
He told the story of the Good Samaritan. What is that? It's the person that doesn't look like you, think like you, act like you, believe like you, behave like you. The person who didn't have the same experiences growing up as you. The person who's registered with the, the, the different political party than you are. The person, the person who voted for that person that you didn't want to win, that's who you need to love unconditionally. I can't do that. You can't do that. We can't do that without the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. We think about this dunamis dynamite power as a power to do, but what if it's simply just a power to be? Look at Acts chapter one, verse eight. Again, Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then he follows that up by saying what? And you will be my witnesses, comma, then you will do, tell people about me everywhere. You will receive power that enables you to be And then as a result of your being, then you will be equipped and empowered to do. We have to understand that the power of the Holy Spirit is a power to be first and to do second. We've gotten really good at the doing and we come to church and we do and we go on mission trips and we do and we come and we serve and we do and we're, we're doing and we're doing and we're doing. But listen, Jesus says that one day some are gonna stand before him and say, in your name, did we not? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not heal the sick? Did we not do all of these things in your name? And I will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because you were so consumed with the doing that you forgot about the being. You're so concerned with what you were doing for me that you simply forgot to just be with me. Maybe if we stopped worrying about the doing and we started focusing on just being a son or being a daughter of the most high just being in his presence and and being intimate with him and being in relationship with him. Jesus says that, that apart from me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15, that you are the branches, I am the vine. and, And if you remain in me, then you'll produce fruit because any branch that remains in the vine produces fruit. Listen, you are the branch. Your job is to bear fruit. Your job is not to produce the fruit. The branch doesn't make the fruit. The branch bears the fruit. The branch doesn't have to focus on making an apple. I hope I make an apple today. I hope I make an apple today. I hope I'm, that's not what the branch is thinking. You know what the branch is thinking? Just let me stay on the trunk today. Just let me stay attached today. Just let me stay connected to my source today. And as I stay connected to my source, guess what? Oh, look, there's an apple. We got so many Christians that are like, I hope I can have joy today. I hope I can have joy today. I hope I can produce peace in my life today. I hope I have peace in my mind today. I hope I can work up some self-control today. Your job is not to produce the fruit. Your job is to bear the fruit. Who produces it? The spirit, how? As I remain in him, as I focus on the being, he takes care of the doing. Are you following me today? We've got this equation backwards. Holy Spirit, give me your power so that I can do. No, Holy Spirit, give me your power so that I can just be. And as I be, then the doing takes care of itself. It's dunamis, it's dynamite. And I began to look up dynamite. What does dynamite need? What, what, what is it used for? Why, why do we need dynamite? We have all of these other explosives that we've, we've come up with. Do we even still use dynamite? I learned that dynamite is still used primarily in two different fields, in construction and in mining. It's used in construction typically to demolish an old building or to, to clear a, a mountainside for a roadway, something like that. But But in construction, dynamite, dunamis, is used to remove the old to make way for the new. The power of the Holy Spirit in your life is to come and to remove the old. God, God, get rid of my mind because my mind is jacked up. Your word says to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I don't even know how to do that, but the Holy Spirit, the dunamis, the dynamite power removes that old mind and gives me the mind of Christ. God, help me to take off this old sinful nature, but instead let me clothe myself with your righteousness being transformed into your image. How do I do that? Through the power of the Holy Spirit each and every day. It's the power to remove the old and make way for the new. It's used in mining. What do they use it in mining for? To to bore into and under the surface to reveal the riches that were there that were unseen previously. When God knit you together in your mother's womb, he placed things in you. 
He uniquely gifted you and equipped you for such a time as this. There are, are gifts and strengths and talents and abilities that lie below the surface in your life. Gifts that God has placed there that until the Holy Spirit has a ch- had a chance to work in your life, they will remain unseen. But the body of Christ in our world today needs them. Holy Spirit, would you remove and reveal those things that you've placed inside of me for such a time as this? See, that dunamis power is a power to be. Why? Because it removes all of the old to make way for the new. The problem is, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we've become so self-sufficient in this day and age that, well, I can do it on my own. No, you can't. You can't. You know how I know? Because I've tried. I've tried to do it on my own. And you know what I've realized? When I do it on my own, I end up on the side of a road stranded somewhere pushing my life up a hill because God, I'm on empty. God, I'm on empty. God, I've tried to go so long and I've tried to just make it between stops, but instead, would you come and would you today, would you right now fill me? Wherever you're at today, here's the good news. Wherever you find yourself, whatever condition, whatever you carried in with you, good news is that you've been promised a helper. How do I access that? How do I, how do I get that? All you have to do is ask. Jesus says this, he, he asked the people a question. He says, how many of you fathers, how many of you fathers, if your, your kid asked you for a fish, you would give him a snake? No, Jesus, that's ridiculous. We would not give our kids a snake. Okay, well, how many of you, if, if your kid asked you for an egg, you would give them a scorpion? No, Jesus, I'm not giving my kid a, maybe if I was in a car across Florida and they were fighting, I'd think about it, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I'd think about it. (laughs) No, we wouldn't do that, Jesus. He says, perfect. Then he says this, he he concludes this thought with this statement. He says, if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you're here today, you need to know that the Holy Spirit is a person, not an experience. Maybe you were filled 20 years ago. Maybe you were filled 20 minutes ago. You you need a fresh touch and a fresh infilling today. Maybe you're here today. You've never been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. In just a moment, I'm gonna invite you down and I'm gonna pray for you. And I believe that as we pray today, that the Holy Spirit is gonna fall and he's gonna equip you. He's gonna enable you. He's gonna empower you to live the life that God has called you to live. To live the life that you've been trying to muster up on your own to produce the fruit that you've been trying to work out in your own life, but can't manage to do. Today, the Holy Spirit wants to do that in your life. If you would, at West Dodge, at Fremont, Papillion, Midtown, wherever you find yourself, would you stand with me today? And give you an opportunity to respond to the word this morning. Like I said, in just a moment, I'll invite you forward. We're gonna pray for people to be filled with the dunamis, dynamite power of the Holy Spirit. But, but maybe you're here, maybe you're at one of the campuses, maybe you're watching online and you haven't taken that first step. And that first step is, is recognizing your need for a savior. The first step is looking into God's word, looking into that mirror and, and recognizing that God on my own, I am, I'm a mess. I am a sinner in need of a savior. Maybe you've never asked Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. I wanna give you the opportunity to do that today at all of our campuses and watching online. Would you just bow your heads? And if that's you, you need to ask Jesus in, into your heart and into your life. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Church, would you help us pray today? Just pray it out loud, pray it from your heart. Repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Jesus, thank you so much that you gave up your life so that I could find new life in you. And today... I confess, I've messed up. I need a savior. Would you not only be my savior, but would you be my Lord? Would you lead me and guide me in all of your ways? Help me to live for you from this day forward for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, if you're here, if you're at any of our campuses and you wanna be filled with the, the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna invite you to step out right now. 
to step out of your seat, come on down. We're gonna, we're gonna pray for you. We're gonna believe God to, to, to pour out his spirit to fill you at all of our campuses. The worship team is gonna come 30 seconds. They're gonna lead us in this chorus. And as they do, step out from where you're at, come down and get the power that you need so that you can be who God made you to be. Come on, right now, step out of your seat. I believe and I, I believe in my heart. I believe that the Spirit is telling me that there are more. That more of you need to be down here. Now listen, you said, Pastor John, I could ask, and all I had to do was ask, yes, you could be filled right where you're at. There's nothing, there's nothing magical about coming down here. That, that, to all who asks, he gives. But here's what here's what I do know. Sometimes it it requires us to take a step in the physical for something to to happen in the spiritual. There's a story in scripture about a woman who had this issue and she had this this condition in her body that she'd been dealing with for 12 years. The Bible says that she spent all of her money trying to, to go to all of the doctors and nobody could fix it. Nobody could fix the problem. Nobody could take care of it. One day Jesus was traveling through town and this woman said, if I could just, if I could just touch his jacket, I know that I'll be healed. The woman with the issue of blood, we don't even know her name today. But the Bible tells us that she fought through the crowd. She took a step in the, in the physical. Could she have been healed right where she was? Absolutely. But she said, I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone. I don't care what people say. I don't care what they think. I need to touch God today. And a lot of times we can come into church and we can leave saying that, you know, God touched me today. God moved and God touched my heart today. But when's the last time you fought through the crowd and you reached out and you touched him? She fought through the crowd, she touched him and Jesus stops everything. And here's what Jesus says. He says, who touched me? And I love Jesus and I love the disciples and I love their banter back and forth because the disciples say, what do you mean, Jesus? Look around you, everyone's touching you. Like, what do you mean, who touched me? Hello, the crowd's pressing against you. We're all touching you. And Jesus says, no, somebody touched me because power, Same word, dunamis. He says, dunamis went out from me. Somebody touched me and dunamis left me and entered them. And in that moment, God took what was and replaced it with what he intended. Today, I don't know where you're at, but maybe today you need to fight through a crowd and you need to come down. There's still time. If you need to join us at any of our campuses, if you're watching online and you today, you say, I need the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your hands out like this. Like if somebody was gonna come and just drop something in your lap, put put yourself in a position to receive. We're gonna pray that the Holy Spirit would fill you today. God, I thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that you are not a man that you should should lie or change your mind, but if you promise that we can take it to the bank, you have promised to send us a helper, to send us an advocate, an encourager, uh, someone to lead us into all truth. And that is the Holy Spirit. So Lord, we thank you for the promise. We thank you for the person. We thank you for the person of the Holy Spirit that that lives in us, that dwells within us. Your your word says that, that, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the literal dwelling place of your spirit. Lord, today I pray that you would fill each and every one of us, each and every one, wherever we find ourselves at, that you would fill us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet with your spirit, with your power, equipping, enabling, and empowering us to live the life that you have called us to live. May we not focus on the doing, but Lord, may we just simply rest in the being. May we rest knowing that we are children of the most high. 
knowing that we've been adopted into your family, knowing that we can call out Abba, Father, and as the Spirit produces fruit and gives gifts and equips us to step out in the doing, that time will come. But Lord, we thank you that we can simply rest in your presence. God, I pray your gifts, I pray your fruit, I pray your power to be active and evident on each and every one of us that as we go from this place, may we increase in love. May we increase in joy. May we increase in peace and in patience and in kindness and in goodness and in gentleness and in faithfulness and in self-control. May we increase in your fruit by, by a result of our proximity to you. And we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. God, we thank you for what you are going to do in us and through us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together and thank God for what he's done this morning? What a profound time with Pastor John Weasel. It was incredible to have that moment of the infilling of the Holy Spirit at the end of our service. And if you're joining with us and you want to step further into the infilling of the Holy Spirit in your life, I want to invite you to go to our website and in our chat box, reach out on that very note. And one of our team members can respond to that, pray with you and see God move powerfully in your life. We believe it. Maybe you're joining us this morning as well and you haven't fully made a commitment to follow Jesus yet. We want to invite you to head to our website and type decision in the chat box. A member of our team will reach out to you, further explain what it means and what it looks like to follow Jesus, as well as get a copy of this book called Brand New, written by Pastor Les, into your hands. It outlines what a life following Jesus looks like, where to begin, and what a journey with Jesus really is. So go ahead and head to our website in the chat box and type decision, and a member of our team will reach out to you. You can also, in the same way, in that same chat box, reach out if you want prayer or connection deeper with us if you're new, so we can initiate conversations along all those lines and pray with you and connect with you further. So do that as well in the same chat box. Thanks again for your outrageous generosity in returning the Lord's tithe. We want to remind you that you can do that on our app as well as on our website. Thanks again for being in church. It's so great to be together. We hope you have a great weekend. And we'll see you in June. It's crazy. Summer. Summertime is here. We'll see you soon.